Hey guys, Becky here, 5T Baker. Welcome back to my channel. So it's been a while since I've done any sugar flowers on the channel, but I am back with some beautiful, realistic sugar cosmos. These gals are so pretty. Today we'll be going through how to make a realistic center, the petals, the calyx, the leaves, all of that. Feel free to use fondant with Tylos, store-bought gum paste, homemade gum paste, rice paste, bean paste, whatever it is that you guys use. It will work for these petals. Everything is fairly simplistic, but we are going through a lot, so let's get right to it. I'm going to start off by making the center of the Cosmo flower and in order to do this I'm not going to use gum paste, I'm going to use embroidery thread because I don't want it to be heavy and close together, I want it to be lighter so I get that effect with this embroidery thread. What I do is wrap it around my thumb a few times, the more I wrap it the thicker it'll be and then I slide it out and through that circle I hook a 26 gauge wire. I do this for each end of the circle so that I can end up with two centers. Once I have that, I grab some more thread and I tie it right above the hook of the wire so that when I cut this in half, I have a perfect little circle and I don't have the thread popping out through two ends. This is pretty similar to making a yarn pom-pom if you've ever done that. Once I have both ends tied, I go ahead and cut it right down the middle and I fluff it up just to spread out the center a little bit. Now to dust the center, what I'm using is a mixture of half cornmeal and half color dust. I like the color of the color dust, but I like the texture and the, th the thick granules of the cornmeal, so a mixture works for me. I go ahead and lightly dip it in some edible glue and using my little tool here that I have, I'm just spreading it around. I don't want to actually tug on the thread because it will become undone and get messy and then I'll have to snip it. I just wanna move it around so that I don't have thick clumps of glue. Then I go ahead and dip it in my mixture and the same thing, I'm going to move around the dust because it tends to want to clump and I don't want that. And from here you adjust as you like. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more bright yellow because that's my preference, but you can leave it as is or do as you like. Next we're going to work on our petals and I'm just going to go ahead and use a veining board for this because I find it easiest to wire with a veining board. What I'm doing here is prepping it with some Crisco just because my veining board is pretty beat up so it likes to catch my flower paste. I'm going to do all the veins on here at once but I'm going to cut them individually so that I don't tear or stretch out my paste too thin. As always, prepping my area with a bit of cornstarch so that nothing sticks. And using my Cosmo cutter, I'll go ahead and cut, but I want the vein part, that thick part that sticks out, to only go about two thirds of the way. I don't want it all the way at the top. I go ahead and do this for all of my petals. The Cosmo can have as many or as few petals as you like. I'm just going with what I have right now. Once I have all my petals laid out, I go ahead and grab a 30 gauge wire and I dip it in some edible glue and then I carefully push it through about a third of the way, pinch my edges closed, and then I go ahead and do all the rest of my petals the exact same way. Now I'm going to go ahead and lightly use a rolling ball tool to thin out the edges and lessen that lump a little bit, but I'm not too worried about this because my veiner has a lot of texture, so it tends to hide all of those bumps. 
With the veiner, I dust it with a bit of cornstarch so it doesn't stick, pop it in, give it a little squeeze, and then fix anything I need. Because this veiner is very veined, if that makes sense, I have to be a little bit more gentle, but I like all of the texture and movement that it gives. Then I just go ahead and put it to dry. Now once they're dry to the touch, I'll go ahead and color them and I can leave them white because they would look just gorgeous that way. But for these, I wanted to give them just a little bit of color, so I'm taking some pink and I'm going all around the edges of the petal. This is also really nice because I can go ahead and give the flowers some color without spending too much color dust on the petal itself. It's just enough. And I do the front and the back just the same, leaving the center white. Now, this is probably the trickiest part. I go ahead and take my floral tape and I split it in half using that little yellow tool I had there. Because what I'm going to do is that little bulb part of the thread, I'm going to cover it with tape. So I start about an inch below where the thread is, roll my tape all the way up, and then I roll it around a few times so that I have tape right around that little bulb part. This way when I put the petals onto my flower, I can easily tie it right around that little bulb part and it looks more natural. It looks like the petals are coming right out of the center of the flower, not like I have a lump of thread tied up acting as a center. I go ahead and take the rest of the tape all the way down and then starting at the top, wrap it a few times around and because it's tape on tape, it will stick much easier now. I go ahead and prep all of my petals by bending them back right at the base and then I add them one by one. You can go ahead and add a bunch at a time if you're comfortable with that. I find it easier to just do a wrap around, add a petal, another wrap around, add another, and so on until I'm done. For most of my flowers, I added about seven petals because I happen to like odd numbers, but go ahead and add as many or as few as you like because maybe some just have more petals or some dropped a few petals. Either way, it'll be just fine. Once you have all your petals on there, go ahead and angle your wire down 45 degrees and run it all the way down your stem. The next thing we're gonna do now is work on our calyx and because the Cosmo has such a long exaggerated calyx, we're gonna wire each one. We're not going to do the stamp out calyx that you usually see come in rose sets. You can if you like. I just find it easier to do the Cosmo with individual wires because then I can have it be really extravagant and long and exaggerated and not worry about it breaking. So what I'm doing is grabbing a 34 inch wire, wrapping a little bit of green around it and I want it to be about three quarters long as the cutter that I used for each of the petals. And then I try to make it almost like a little V shape, very fat at the bottom and thin at the top. I go ahead and add all of these the same way that I did the petal, and I'm doing a very poor job of showing you how I put it on there, but it's the exact same method that I used for adding the petals. You see them poking out there, a nice little star shape, and it looks so pretty. And you don't have to worry about it ripping. Now the last part of this is going to be the leaf and for that I'm using a 32 gauge wire, wrapping it in floral tape all the way down. I flip my wire and then I wrap my tape all the way up to about an inch from the top 
cut the tape about an inch long and then wrap the tape around itself so that I have a stringy little arm. I go ahead and repeat this upside down process for as many stringy arms as I want and that will be my little stringy leaf arm for my Cosmo. You could of course make it a little thicker with gum paste but I think that this works just fine. The only thing left to do now is to attach it to your flower. So starting at the top of your flower, begin to wrap your tape going down at a 45 degree. Stop wherever it is that you want it and keep wrapping with the arm attached to the stem, taking it all the way down. At this point, you can also go ahead and add any additional flowers that you made but you're all done. Adjust everything and admire how pretty it looks. All right guys, one more look at the flowers. As always, if you have any questions, please do drop them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you guys for the next sweet tutorial.